For our next lab, lab 12, we're going to be setting up multipathing. And essentially what that is, it allows VMware to do a multiple pathway to a, a storage or a storage line. For example, we have single pathways set up for our iSCSI currently. And in real life or in a production environment, you really wouldn't want that because if something happened to that pathway, you'd have data corruption. So it's always better to have multiple pathways, and so hence multipathing. Uh, go ahead and log in. Make sure you're logging into our vCenter, and make sure that our Star Wars Management Console is up and running, and that we see both our targets and our devices are both there. From here forward, we're just going to assume that this is always happening, because the, this has to happen. Uh, so remember that we're using a software iSCSI SAN, and so for in order for our ESXi hosts to connect to those LUNs, this has to be up and running. So from here forward, just assume that when we power on our lab environment, we're checking this just to make sure. Another area that we have to make sure to check is some of our services. From here forward, we're looking at two very specific services and that is our virtual center service service VMware and you'll notice that it's started already if it's not started automatically go ahead and start it I've noticed in the lab room that this startup process can take several minutes you kind of have to be patient if you already have your VMs running, eventually this will start up. Because notice it's automatically, but there's a delayed portion of it. Delayed start. But this is another area that we need to make sure is running and functioning, or our vCenter server doesn't actually function. So I want to make sure that's taken care of, go ahead and close out of it. Same thing with our Starwind software, just go ahead and minimize it. Go ahead and log into our VMware client and make sure we're looking at our template view. We want to double check oh, for multipathing, I'm sorry, hosts and clusters. And you'll notice that we already have our VMs from last lab. But we're going to be looking at specifically our individual hosts. So click on ESXi1 and go to the configure tab. From our configure tab, we're going to be looking at our storage. We may or may not get a warning message for our, for our NFS. That is just because our capacity is fairly low. No worry, we are going to be working on that a little bit later. We're going to be setting up our iSCSI 1 at first, so select iSCSI 1 and go ahead and click on properties notice that we have the ability to rename it to increase our size to enable a storage IO control uh, but for what we're doing we're going to man manage pathways go ahead and click on manage pathways and right now you should be able to see our lens we're going to do that we're going to change them so they're not fixed path, but they're round robin. And we're going to do that for both. And once you make the change, click change. Make sure that they're the same on both sides. So what is round robin? So when you click on it, we have most recently used round robin and fixed path. Fixed path is it will just use a single pathway and that's it. Versus round robin, it will actually go uh, around each path that's available. So let's say there are two paths. On the first try, I'll try path one. On the second, path two. On the third, path one. Then path two. Then path one. And it'll go back and forth. It'll go in a huge circle. But it's a way to load balance between both pathways versus just having a fixed pathway. 
and once we're done go ahead and close it click refresh okay and we should be done note that we did this for iSCSI 1 let's go ahead and do it for iSCSI 2 as well round robin change they both should be round robin refresh it go ahead and close out of it and that is all we had to do for multipathing. We're also assuming that again, that our environment actually does have multiple pathways, which in our current environment we do. We have two NICs, one for iSCSI 1, one for iSCSI 2. So we have pathways from our host to our SAN. Now that we did that on ESXi 1, let's do the same thing but for our ESXi2 host. So navigate to that host, configure, go to storage, select the appropriate iSCSI data store, properties, manage path, again we're changing them to round robin, verify that they're both round robin, close, refresh, and do the same thing for iSCSI 1. Manage path. Round robin. Change. Verify it's the same on both. Close. Refresh. And we are done. We actually will have a later lab when we get into fault tolerance to show that this functions. Uh, I want to thank you and hope you have a good day.